Population growth in the U.S. is an incredibly interesting topic. Figuring out what about a city makes it either grow or shrink is a topic I could talk about for hours. But today I wanted to compare some major metros in the country. I'll go over five that are growing a lot and becoming a major city, and five that I think are kind of falling off the map, fading away. Not necessarily shrinking, but just becoming less important for whatever reason. Before this video starts though, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. We make geography content like this every single week, so if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, I would love if you subscribe to the channel. Thank you. So there are a lot of different cities I could include in this video. Technically, you can cut America basically in half and say 50% of the cities are rising and 50% are fading. But there are 10 cities I thought were specifically interesting, so I'm going to go over them and give my thoughts. Starting in the rising category with the city that has become extremely popular recently, and that's Austin, Texas. So Austin is the capital of Texas, a state with several cities currently booming in population. In fact, Austin is only the fourth largest metro in its own state. So what puts it on this list? Well, if we go back to something like 1970, Austin was not really on the map yet. With a population only around 250,000, places like Houston or Dallas were already established major cities. But Austin has pretty much come out of nowhere since it started booming in population. Especially in the north part of the metro with places like Round Rock, Pflugerville, and Georgetown, which have come out of nowhere. Now growth-wise, Austin Metro has been gaining around 4% every year, getting as high as 4.25% just in 2017. The percentages have slowed in recent years a little bit, but Austin is still a very new and young city, and feels very attractive as a destination to start new and move to. Now housing prices have skyrocketed obviously, and I do think that that has something to do with the slow in the past few years, but that doesn't make Austin any less fun, now at a population of 2.2 million in the metropolitan area. Moving on to the fading metropolises, this is where I feel like people might get more opinionated because these aren't really any major cities that have their whole MSA shrinking, so that's not really what I mean by this. Stagnant growth has to do with it, but also just the loss in notability and overall importance. Now we'll start today with Baltimore. Baltimore obviously has a lot going for it. It's an incredibly historic city in the northeast megalopolis with a great economy focused on the port of Baltimore and the area surrounding the waterfront. Tourism also plays a major role in the area as well. With Baltimore being such a historic city, there's a lot of interesting things to do around the area. But the metro has seen a pretty steady decline from what it once was. The suburbs are still growing, but the closer you get to the actual city, the worse things get. Crime has gotten pretty bad as well, but what I'm more worried about is how it's started to drop off the map when talking about America's most major cities. In 1980, it was the 10th biggest city in the country, but the metro has now fallen down to the 20th ranked, growing much slower than the last city we talked about in Austin. Sure, they've been gaining population, but it's sitting at around 0.5% per year, and lately it's gotten even worse. In 2019, the metro grew by just 0.17%. So things have become relatively stagnant, which puts Baltimore as my choice for a fading metropolitan area. Now we go back to the rising cities, and for this one, I've chosen a more exciting one that not a lot of people really think about, and that's Raleigh, North Carolina. So Raleigh's a city I'm actually very interested in. The economy seems very good for future growth that could turn Raleigh into a very major city. This is another capital, which is something I've noticed coincides with rising cities. It's located in North Carolina, in an area that has been gaining population rapidly for a while now. In fact, it's located in what's called the Research Triangle, which just as a name tells you things are good for the Raleigh economy. It's a major center for high-tech and biotech research. There are also a lot of high-quality jobs there, and with the government there as well, things are looking pretty good. And this is showing in the population changes, with improvements of around 5% every year. And it's gained around 2 million residents in the last 20 years alone. Things look very bright for Raleigh. Now back to the fading metropolises, next we have Cleveland, Ohio. Another major historic city, this time more related to the Rust Belt. Back in the mid-1900s, Cleveland was one of the most important economic hubs in the country. Built off of Lake Erie and the Cuyahoga River. It basically has the same story as every other steel and manufacturing based economic cities. Everything it was built on started to fade, so the metro has faded with it. Once the 18th biggest city back in 1980, it's fallen all the way to the 36th place spot on the leaderboard. Now population wise, things have gotten incredibly stagnant in the metropolitan area, sitting basically at around 0% in a good year and dropping into the negatives most of the time, getting as bad as negative 0.19 in 2019. The city is not where it was 20, 40, or even 60 years ago. Going back to rising metropolises, we have Boise, Idaho. This is yet another state capital. Tucked in at the edge of the Sawtooth Range, it's a young and really interesting city. Now, Boise is not as much on the rise as it was before, 
because people have already figured out just how awesome this city is. Things have gotten extremely expensive, but the growth is still there. It's on the mountains, there's a lot of good jobs, and there's not much to hate about the area. Growth has been steady, sitting around 2% every year, and the metro has gotten up to 780000 in 2022. Next up in our fading metropolises, we return to the Rust Belt with Buffalo, New York. It has a similar story to Cleveland with the decline of manufacturing-based industries, and the metro has struggled to adapt to the more recent developments in the country. Also, there isn't much drawing people to Buffalo, New York, which makes it even more difficult for it to get back on its feet. The economy has become service-based, focusing on healthcare, business, and retail. Depending on what you include in the metro, the population is actually declining year to year, losing around a quarter of a percent every year, and it hasn't really figured itself out recently. Moving back to the rising metropolises, we have the Fayetteville-Springdale metro of northwest Arkansas. This one I find especially interesting because of its location in a state that isn't necessarily booming economically or population. But this area has done incredibly well for itself, and feels like an entirely new state from the rest of Arkansas. Walmart is based in Bentonville on the north side of the metro, and the University of Arkansas is located in Fayetteville. This has resulted in the jobs being high quality, and the overall economic outlook is looking very good. The population is growing at around 1.5% every year, which doesn't seem insane, but the overall rise of the metro is something you can't ignore. Back to the fading cities, we have Providence, Rhode Island. Now, this is what I feel like more people should know about. Providence is not doing amazing. People don't really think about it when talking about the worst cities in the U.S. And though I'm not saying it's a terrible place, there's no denying it's not what it once was. There's a lot bad going on there. Most of the economy is based in trade, transportation, and government. It doesn't have much of the rising industries that you hope to see in cities. The metro has been growing very slowly, by around 0.15% per year in the past decade. Providence is one of the major northeast cities, and at this point, I don't feel like it's there anymore. Now, I have two honorable mentions here, with Myrtle Beach for the rising metropolis and Jackson, Mississippi for the fading one. Neither of these cities are really considered when talking about major cities in the U.S., and they never really were. With Myrtle Beach, things are going very well, and the metro is growing on the tourism industry and is developing other industries as well. For Jackson, it's another state capital in the state of Mississippi, so it was kind of set up for failure and is really struggling. Those are the cities I wanted to go over today, though. I think this is an incredibly interesting topic, and just talking about the cities and what makes them the way they are is super fascinating to me. There's always more to go over, and I'll never get to everything I want to. But at least I can give you this for today. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members Obi Grad, Don DeShirlia, Elijah Pass, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Uncouver, Wolflake73, Snyder Schwein, Florida Jake, Philip Gertz, Samnam Woods, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinoff, KMS162, Haystack, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Haz of the Wolf, Jake Holloway, JL, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, and Bryzen. I appreciate you all so much. You help out the channel a ton. If you want to become a member, the link is down in the description below. You're just giving extra money to help me out as a person. All of this goes into my savings for like college and getting a car and stuff. So you're really just helping me out as a person if you appreciate the videos. Thank you.